Hello everybody, thank you so much for joining me for today's Pilates sequence. Today we will be focusing on the glutes, so we'll be doing lots of little butt burning sequences. I'll be using a loop band, if you have one grab it and use it with me. If you don't have one, don't worry about it because you'll still get a nice butt burning time without it. So as always, let's start with your breath. Bring yourself down to lie flat on your back. Take your hands to your ribs and breathe in. Feel your ribs expand and then breathe out and they come together. Let's just stay there and keep doing that for a few cycles. Allow your body to arrive and settle in. Allow your mind to arrive and settle in. This simultaneous commitment from your mind and your brain for the focus and the follow through and from your body for the work and the discomfort. Together they will work throughout your Pilates session to bring you the results that you desire. But only when you find the ability to connect them together and to connect them with your breath. Come back to your breath now. Bring your focus to increasing the expansion and increasing the coming together of your ribs. Get active and involved in feeling them move to the front and to the sides and to the back. And active and involved in feeling them knit back into the middle. Start now to connect your core. So on your exhale, your belly draws in pelvic floor lifts. Feel this sense of narrowing around your waist. Inhale, ribs expand. Exhale, connect back in. Being aware and focused, finding something to relax, feeling everything firing up from your center, radiating outward. One more breath here, and then take your hands down by your sides, checking in that you have a neutral pelvis, and taking your heels away from your glutes so that they are hip width apart. And then press your heels in, leave your pelvis neutral, lift and lower. So let's just get a little bit of glute firing up happening here. You're going to need to press your heels in and get that little bit of Squeezing in tone at the top to really feel the work happening. Again, being mindful of your core. Ribs coming together. Relaxing through your shoulders. Three. Two. Holding up on your last one. Alternating lift. Lower. Lift. Lower. So starting now to initiate a little bit of a work on just one side and checking in that your pelvis stays neutral and in control and that you're not letting it tip to either side. Relax your neck, your shoulders, your face. Breathe through the movement. One more either side. And then sitting down. Coming now through some pelvic tilts and movements. So posterior tilt your pelvis, imprint your spine into the mat, anterior tilt, have the curve that forms underneath. And you can take your hands to your pelvis and feel this mobility. And I want you to get really intentional about noting whether it is in your pelvis alone. So we don't want any rocking around of your body. Find that you can posterior tilt your pelvis like you're trying to tip your pubic bone towards you and then anterior tilt like you're trying to tip your pubic bone down towards the floor. Connect this to your breath. On your exhale, when your ribs come together, you posterior tilt. Inhale, anterior tilt, opening your ribs up to the ceiling. Still checking in for this deep core connection. On each exhale, draw your belly in. Get hands on with your body. Don't be afraid. Don't let yourself fall into that discomfort stage of 
feeling how it feels in your body and instead get curious and ask about it. Taking your hands by your sides now, on your next posterior tilt, you're going to imprint your spine, articulating your way all the way up into your bridge, and then articulating your way back down. So still find that sense of glute connection that we had a second ago when we were doing it without articulation, but now allow yourself to add this articulation in. Feel how you can be strongly connected, working right from your center and allowing that strength to radiate out to your limbs. The next time you're down on the floor, leave one foot on the floor and lift the other up to tabletop. Now you're going to continue to articulate up through your, sp through your spine, coming up onto just one foot and then articulating your way back down. Stay on the same side. Exhale, posterior tilt, articulating up, check in with your pelvis, keeping it in the same position and then articulating your way back down. So we're putting together the first version and the second version here while adding the spinal articulation and making it a little bit more challenging because you are pressing up slowly on one side. If you need to do this pressing up on both and then coming to the marching, totally fine. Let's do one more here, exhale. And then returning down, placing your foot down on the floor, lifting up with the other side, Exhale, posterior tilt, articulating your way up. You will hopefully also start to, or be starting to feel this in your hamstring. Get that sense of really connecting right where your hamstring and glute meet. That high hamstring is where we're targeting. Let's go for three more here. Again, find that intention, drive through when it gets challenging. Be okay with getting uncomfortable. Last one. And then bring your leg down. You can hug your knees into your chest. Gently rocking from side to side. And then we're gonna come over to your side with your bottom leg bent up at 90 degrees, coming onto your forearm. Top leg is going to extend out long. Check in here, elbow underneath your shoulder, finding that core connection, coming up into your side plank. Lift and lower. Now try to have this side plank happening in your glute up here, not just in your quad. So really pick up into your abdominals underneath, find your strong core connection, keep breathing. Stabilizing in this shoulder here. Working from your center. Three. Two. Last one. Coming down, bend that top leg up to 90 degrees. Lift and lower. So both your thighs now are parallel at the front and I want you to really feel this work happening into your side as well as into your glute meat up here at the top. Connecting from your breath. Feeling that you are in control as you execute the work. Let's go for five. Four. Three. Two, last one. Now bring yourself all the way down. You can be head in your hand or all the way onto the floor. Bring both of your legs forward. Now they're still gonna be bent. Heels come together, find that core connection. Open and close. So we're gonna go through a series of variations of the clam because it is a super effective exercise to get glute to activation and maintain pelvic stability. So if you're just sitting here kind of doing this forward and back up and down, really get a little bit more involved in that. Press your heels together, press your bottom leg into the floor. So it's like you're trying to press yourself all the way down into the floor. 
That's gonna help get work all the way into both legs. Again, checking in with your core, ribs come together. External rotation, so we're trying to feel it into your glute max and along the top of your leg here where it's almost like it's twisting around. Three more. Two. Last one, now lift your bottom leg up and then continue. Still feeling your heels pressing in and noticing that your pelvis isn't shifting at all as you do this. So it stays in the same spot and you are just externally rotating your thigh in your uh, hip socket. Finding your breath here even as it gets challenging and it starts to burn and it's hard, keep pushing. Three more. Two. Last one. Now drop your bottom leg down, top leg, knees together, heels together. So a little bit of internal and external rotation here. Really allowing that to flow through intentionally twisting your femur in your hip socket. So notice nothing else changes. It's just my thigh here twisting around internally and then out externally. And if your butt is burning, then you're doing the right thing. Mine's burning up too. Keep breathing. Let's go for five. Four, three, two, last one. Then take your leg, bring it up to 90 degrees, press it out long, and then pull. So find this connection here from your center. As you pull it up, Really feel that you are connecting and then pressing out long and you're connecting all the way down the back chain like you're trying to drive your heel. Inner thigh drives along or glides along the floor, parallel. Three more. Two. Last one, now hold it out, lift and lower. This is parallel work here, so you shouldn't be able to get it way up high to the ceiling because you're staying parallel, so you have not that much space here when you open up, the bones would crash into, or do crash into each other almost. So drive through your heel, keep it long, all the way up, calf and hamstring, keep breathing. This is our last one here, and then we're gonna change it up. Still with your butt though. Getting, it lots of, getting lots of butt burning work today. Let's go for five, four, three, two, last one. Yes, okay, very good. Bring yourself around and you can press back into your child's pose. Just have a really nice opening up there for your Glue for a second. And then as you're ready, bring yourself up. We're gonna come up to four point kneeling. So take a second and set yourself up. Palms underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. Really noticing that feedback and positioning underneath of you. And then coming into some cat and cow. So tuck your tailbone on under, drawing your belly up feeling this roundness into your spine. And then inhaling as you come through your extension. So try to feel this even roundness of your whole spine, pulling your belly up, tailbone tucks. And then imagine you're trying to open your ribs to the floor, pulling your palms towards your knees. All the while, feel that you're pressing your palms into the floor. Sits bones open as you press them towards the ceiling. And then draw them together, pelvic floor lifts. Mm. 
Now find your neutral spine. So that's in the middle. With a long line down from the crown of your head out through your tailbone. Opposite arm, opposite leg. Press them away from each other. Bring them back into the center. And then other side. And I want you to think about doing this without anything else in your middle shifting. So your pelvis is going to stay stabilized. There's not going to be it dumping down onto one side of your body, in your shoulders or in your legs. Lengthening up through the crown of your head. Now you're going to hold out when your left leg is extended and then lift your leg. So small pulsing movement here, extra little bit of work for control with your arm being out. Find that connection where your hamstring and glute meet, still centering from your core. Three, two, place your arm down and now your foot tap and lift, tap and lift. Finding your breath here, still keeping that long line along your spine. And as you lift up, imagine that you're trying to squeeze a pebble between where your hamstring and glute meet, right there by your gluteal fold. Five, four, three, two, last one. And then hold it up, flex your foot, bend, extend. So a little bit of work here for your knee. Feel that intentional flexion and extension. So when you bend, imagine you're trying to drag your heel through water towards your sits bone, really feeling that hamstring activation. And then when you extend, get your quad flex at the front. So go all the way, drive through your heel. Let's go for five, four, three, two, last one, hold it bent, small pulsing, press and press. So really again, think about that little squeezing action where your hamstring and glute meet. It's a small movement, but it's really strong right there. Hip extension, really good for walking, running, any movement that we do day to day. Five, four, three, two, last one. Now bring yourself down onto your forearms so you can come off your wrists. Leg stays up, bring your knee to the side and back. Side and back. So it's kind of like you're drawing a uh, mini rain or a half rainbow or a semicircle as you bring it out to the side and return. Find this strong work underneath, still chasing that line along your spine, that connection from your center. Three, two, last one, hold it down, pulse and pulse. So it's kind of like you're trying to drive your knee towards your elbow, but again, a small movement. Keep breathing. Find the connection. Five, four, three, two, and one. Amazing work, everyone. Come back into your child's pose again. Just really letting that release and open up there. Do a little bit of, nice little bit of work there for your butt burning sensation. And then bring yourself all the way down onto your stomach. So we're going to switch things up now a little bit and come through some back extension. Important to always move your spine in all four directions every day. We've done flexion so far, a little bit of extension, but we're going to go into extension a little bit deeper now as well. So hands are by your sides with your thumbs pretty much in line with your nose. You're going to be looking down at the floor. Inhale. Open your ribs underneath, coming up, extending through your thoracic. 
thoracic spine, and then picking your belly button up, core engages as you return down. Imagine you are trying to pull your palms towards your ribs and really connect through your triceps. Your shoulders stay down away from your ears. Your ribs expand, opening towards the floor. And then you pick your belly button up off the floor as your core engages and you glide back down. The next time you're down, bring your hands back a little further and you can come up a little higher if it feels good for you this time. So on, same thing, inhale, opening up and then exhale, control back down. So notice I'm not pressing my hands in to hoist me up. It's just giving me a little bit more space and mobility to come up because my hands are back further. Stay in the previous version if it doesn't feel good for you or if it, this dumps into your lower back. The next time you're down, tuck your toes underneath. Inhale all the way up into your uh, reverse dog and then come up into your plank. So you're now in your high plank position. Find that work from your center underneath. Strong core, one leg lift, lower, lift, lower. So this is actually still glute and hamstring work. Hip extension, press your leg up by squeezing right there where your hamstring and glute meet. Spine is long. Two more on either side. And then bring your knees down. Press back into your child's pose. Give yourself a little pause and a breath there. And then come on up and come around to the other side. So we're going to start with our side lying plank here. So you're going to have your bottom leg bent at 90 degrees. Top leg extends out long. Elbow underneath shoulder. Core engaged from underneath. Lift and lower. Again, really find the stability into your glute. And feel free to also do this with both knees bent on top if that feels better for you. Lots of core and glute, core stability and glute work required here. So just read your body from where it is today, meet it there, and then push it as works for you. Three more. Two. Last one. And then bend both up to 90 degrees. Lift and lower. So I'm feeling this really strong right in here at my waist, kind of like I'm trying to fold my waist, fold right in here at my waist, as well as on the top here into my glute meat. So glute meat is the glute muscle that's responsible for taking your leg out to the side, trying to strengthen that up because it helps support your knee and your hips. And up here, working your obliques, your side abdominals. Simultaneously picking up from the bottom and side abdominals on the other side. Keep breathing. Let's do five, four, three, two, last one. Bringing it down all the way or head onto your hand, doesn't matter which you're choosing. Knees are gonna stay bent, heels come together. Activating from your core, feel this mouse hole space underneath, open and close. So I talk about having the mouse hole space underneath,
because it really makes you become aware of whether you are engaging your core and like, wrapping yourself around the middle, narrowing at your waist, or if you're just kind of letting yourself hang out here and lie on your side. So we can all just lie on our side when we're in bed, but for Pilates time, we want to really be trying to keep that engaged and connected. More work for your center. Press your heels in, external rotation here of your femur. Three more. Two. Last one. And then bottom leg lifts off. Continue on. Open and close. Now if you feel when you're up here like you have a little bit more range, this is totally fine and it is valid, but I don't want you to get more range by dumping yourself open. So really feel that you are rotating your femur here, connecting to your glute, connecting here from your center. Find your breath pattern. Always exhaling, ribs come together, pelvic floor lifts. Three more, two, last one, and then bring that bottom leg down. Knees together, heels together, knees together, heels together. So now doing internal rotation and external rotation, putting them together, really important to work for hip mobility and for keeping your hips strong and healthy and allowing them to allow you to do whatever you want. Check in. What's your core doing? What's your breath doing? Three more. Two. Last one. And then bring your leg up to 90 degrees, pressing out long and return. So again, get really intentional and curious about what is happening in every part of the movement. So when your leg presses out, it's like you have a long line all the way down your body out to your heel. And then when it comes in, it stays parallel to the floor. Your knee isn't doing anything wonky going up or down. You're just controlling the movement. Now I recommend you inhale to press out, exhale, core engages as you move through your hip flexor to pull your knee in. Engaging your core allows some of the work to come out of your hip flexor and start from your center and your pelvic floor. Stay with me for five, four, three, Two. Last one, hold it out long, lift and lift. Again, we're parallel here, so your leg is still driving long, but it's not able to go up really high towards the ceiling. Get really aware of what the, the positionings are in your body, parallel, external, internal. Keep driving through your back here to your abductors, glute knee, doing the work. That's five, four, three, two, last one. Bring it down and then come up into your child's pose again. Just pressing yourself open. You can take your legs as wide as feels good for you. And then walk your hands over to one side, getting a little bit of lateral flexion here. And then back through the center and over to the other side. And then coming back to the center, peeling yourself up to your four point kneeling. So sitting up here in your four point kneeling, again, palms underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. Checking in for that long spine, crown of your head to your tailbone, and then alternating, pressing one arm opposite leg, back to the center. So really feeling this sense of opposition here, like your arm and leg 
leg are being pulled in complete opposite directions. How can you work from your core? How can you get more from your body? On the next one, with your when your left or your right leg, sorry, is up, leave it up there. Lift and lift. So we're doing the other side. If you did your left side last time, you're doing the right with me. If you did your right last time, then you're doing your left. Keep finding this sense of being pulled from your hand and your leg the same time that you're lifting. Five, four, three, two, last one. Hand comes down. Now tap and lift. Feel your palms pressing into the mat underneath of you, connecting from your center, stability through your pelvis, find your breath, three, two, last one, now hold it up long, flexing your foot, bend, extend. So back to thinking about that work that you get to have for your knee, driving through your leg, extending it completely long. Press into your heel, quad flexes. And then when you bring your heel up, you imagine that you're driving it through water, trying to press it towards your tailbone. Keep breathing. What are your ribs and core doing underneath? That's five. Four, three, two, last one. Now you're going to hold it flex, press, and press. Small little bit of work here. Can you get it to fire up right at the top of your hamstring, right by your butt cheek? Your big butt cheek muscle and your top, the high hamstring, that's what's working for this hip extension. Keep breathing. Five. Four, three, two, last one, down to your forearms to come off your wrists. And now you come to the side and back to the center. Keep your spine lengthened, it's just now down at an angle. Finding that strong work. Connecting from your breath. Three. Two, hold it down, pulse and pulse. So a small little movement here, your butt is burning up, stay in it. Keep breathing through it. Five, four, three, two, and one. Amazing, okay, bring your knee down. Open up into your child's pose again. It's a really great one for releasing your glutes and stretching them out. And then bring yourself up onto your side. So we're gonna move your, we're gonna take a pause on the glute stuff and move your spine now in another direction. So my legs and feet are to the right side. Find yourself sitting up tall and then come on down to your left forearm and extend your arm up overhead. And I want you to really imagine that you're creating this beautiful rainbow shape with your arm and your body. Lateral flexion of your spine, folding it to the side. Unravel from there, other direction. So again, this is a really great idea to move your spine in all four directions every day. Let's go down again, folding over the side, exhale, feel that sense of elongation along the top, fingertips to your top butt cheek. Returning back through. And then from there, leave your left knee on the floor. Bring your right leg all the way around, 
hook your arm across, spinal rotation. So feel here how you can exhale and spiral like you're trying to twist and look over your right shoulder. Each breath and exhale, can you find a little bit of a deeper twist? Unravel from there, flip yourself over to the other side. So take a second and set yourself up. Feel that you are sitting tall and then come down onto your right forearm, pressing across. Again, allow that length to come through. And then unraveling, rolling across the other side. Let's go one more time. Intentional here, folding underneath, pressing over top. Your spine loves to move in all these directions. It's so good for it. And it's nice to have a little pause for the butt. Crossing over. So we wanna create strong glutes for all your daily activities like walking, running, standing, but also because when we have strong glutes, it helps protect your lower back and helps with your hips. That is enough of that there. Right leg stays down, left leg comes all the way around, crosses over, opens up as you rotate. Exhale, get a little deeper. Spinal rotation, this is your fourth spinal movement. And then unravel from there. Grab your band. You're going to take it onto your, and place it around your calves. And just to get a little bit of core work here before we keep going with the glutes. Leave it on there, take out your legs uh, separated out so they're about hip width apart. Extend your arms out in front, sit yourself up tall to start, and then draw your belly in, spine stretch. Bring yourself forward. Restacking, sit up tall. Exhale, draw your belly in, rounding forward. Restack. Connect in from your center here, let this work. Let's go for one more. And then make sure your feet are down at the end of the mat. Rounding forward, draw your belly in, coming through your roll down. So once you reach the floor, reach up overhead. And then tuck your chin towards your chest, peeling yourself up. So I have the band on because we're going to do stuff once we reach down, once we're down on the floor and we finish your roll down. But for now, I want you to really focus on connecting your hamstrings underneath. Use your core, control down, reach up, lengthen out, chin tucks, use your core, peel yourself up. So try to come to this through this sense of flow and continuous movement. So there's no jerky movements or no momentum, you're using your breath, and it's just like you're flowing through, reaching forward, tailbone tucks under, draw your belly in, core engages, coming down, arms come up overhead, exhale, tuck your chin, draw your belly in, flowing up. See if you can really use that connection with your breath and your body to facilitate this movement. You're gonna finish down on the floor on your next one. Leaving yourself there. Take a second, checking in here with your ribs and your pelvis. So your pelvis is gonna be neutral. Ribs are gonna be connected, so not letting them flare out to the ceiling. And then lift one leg, or lift, one leg is gonna stay planted on the floor. So check that your hamstring stays ground onto the floor. And then your other leg lifts up, pull out to the side and return. Now I want you to imagine that your leg is a long stick 
and that the movement is being initiated right up here from the top, back to that glute med. So try not to just fire up really strong here along the side of your leg. See if you can initiate it here. Find your pelvic floor connection. Use your core. Send it out to the side. So there's a little bit of intentional movement and muscle activation you have to do. Otherwise, it will just come out to the side using your uh, very strong in your IT and your TFL. So get that, that uh, glute fired up. Three more here. Two. Last one. Place it down, connect your hamstring underneath, the same thing on the other side. So pull out to the side and return. Again, get curious. See if you can get the muscles to fire up. Initially, they might not want to, and you can do the work to change that. So find your breath here, find your grounding down from your stabilizing leg, find the work from your center, keep breathing. Three more. Two, last one, and then bring your legs up so they're going to be bent at 90 degrees, or not 90 degrees, sorry, your feet are going to be on the floor starting. Find your core connection, drawing your belly in, and then lift your legs up to 90 degrees. Same thing, now you're pulling out, resisting, and returning. You can have your toes point or feet pointed, or your feet flexed but I want you to go back to here. So find the work in the outsides of your glute, out on your butt, not just really strong firing up in here. See if you can really get this connection. So again, this is abduction. We're taking your legs out to the side. Find your core working, pelvic floor lifting. Everything pulls in, narrows at your waist. And as you come in and out, look up and notice if your knees and feet are staying in line. So we don't want any of this or this. Everything just goes out together, in together. Three, two, last one. Now bring your feet down, add some tension on the band, and I want you to hold the tension out there so that your knees are in line with your feet, so they're not, you're not letting them drop into the center. Keep the tension on. Keep your pelvis neutral. Heels press into the floor or into the mat. Hands come behind to support your neck. Exhale, upper abdominal lift, and return. So we essentially have this isometric holding happening in your glutes while we do upper abdominal lift. And the challenge is to not let your knees start to drift inward. Have this constant sense of outward pressing. And now we're adding some of this great upper abdominal work. So if we tune into that for a second, check that your ribs are coming together as you come up. Belly button comes closer to your ribs and your pelvis stays neutral. Like you're trying to get your shoulder blades up off the floor. Space between your chin and your chest like you have a little peach in there. Five. Four. Three. Two. Last one. Bring it down. Now you can take your legs in for a second. Just give your glutes a little bit of a pause there because all that holding makes them fire up. Now I want you to go out again, same thing. So keep them out there, connect it, firing up, press your heels in, get that hamstring connection. Hands come back behind, this time we're doing oblique work. So lifting up, crossing over, back down, and return other side. So lots going on here for you to tune into in your body. Really start to get aware of all that that is happening. Don't let yourself tune out. Really get curious and dig deeper. My butt is burning up from doing this. Keep going, guys. You're doing awesome. Let's do two more on either side. Last one. Yes, amazing work. Okay, well done. Hug your knees into your chest. Take the band off. 
place at the side. Just kind of rock there side to side for a second if you need to. And then you can bring both of your feet down, cross one leg over, press a little bit on your knee there, and then as you're ready, reach through, grab your shin or the back of your hamstring, and allow your glute to stretch out. You can stay with your foot on the floor if that feels better for you. Doesn't really matter, we're just stretching out your glutes. Releasing down, other side. Crossing over, pushing a little bit there. And then reaching through. Allowing your breath to slow, your mind to slow. Just increasing that awareness throughout your body. Bring both of your feet down, arms come out to either side. Drop your knees to one side, shift your gaze to the other, coming through this spiral and twist. And then switching over other side. Breathing deeply, always connecting to your breath. Bring yourself back to the center now, hands come to your ribs. Breathe in, feel them expand. Exhale, feel them come together. Here we are, coming right back to where we started from. Notice how it feels now in your body to have this mobility and this work. How it feels to have moved your body and to move your spine and to work and to allow your muscles to burn and to feel strong. Take your hands behind your hamstrings. Bring yourself up. Coming to a comfortable seated position. Take your hands out to the sides, breathing in, bring them together as you glide them down to land in front of your heart. Pause there. Give yourself a high five, a positive compliment, a nice word and some kind feedback for doing the work that you did today. It was very good. It was hard. You showed up to do it and you moved your body. Well done to you. Thank you so much for being here to do it with me. Can't wait to see you again soon.